Hello, this is Gray Hughes. I'm doing an update on the Waffle House shooting. First of all, I just want to say uh, on an update on the shooter himself, he was actually arrested at the White House uh, like a year ago. He wanted to visit Trump and he kind of jumped over some barriers and he was arrested and somehow this person with mental issues was able to get a gun again. Apparently his father gave him back guns that were confiscated from at the time or something of that nature. And that's one of the problems we have, okay? I'm for gun ownership. I like the fact that people can own guns, but if you have mental issues like this guy did, you shouldn't have guns. Now, the main part of this video is to show you about James Shaw Jr. He is the hero here. Now, he doesn't claim to be a hero, but I think anybody that can muster up that kind of guts uh, in a situation like that is a hero. Okay, but he's almost more of a hero to me because of how he was in this interview. This was just recorded uh, about 20 minutes ago from a live press conference, and when I watched it, I actually got teary-eyed near the end. Okay, and this guy is, I mean, he really is. He's one of the coolest people I've ever heard talk and the most honest. This guy is unbelievable. Okay, so let's just start playing it and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I think I'm a pretty cool guy to be around. <laughs> <laughs> have, do you have any sort of training in anything like this before? Have you ever, did you know you had this in you? This yeah, I knew I had it in me, but uh, I haven't had any specific combat training. It's just, you know, I had to fight my daughter every night so I can get her put her to bed. But um, I just knew it was it was me or him or that type of that type of scenario. So I chose to go with what I wanted to go with, and it worked. Did you think about your daughter in that moment? I didn't think about my daughter. I'm, so when it, on my Instagram and Facebook, everybody's calling me a hero, but I want people to know <clears throat> that I did that completely out of a selfish act. Um, I was completely doing it just to save myself. Now, me doing that, I did save other people, but I don't want people to think that I was the Terminator or Superman or anybody like that to just, it was just, I figured if I was going to die, he was going to have to work for it. So I rushed him, and it actually worked out to my favor. So um, I actually didn't think about my daughter until I got into um, the ambulance, and um, uh, one of the paramedics asked me about myself, and I told him I had a four-year-old daughter, and uh, that's, that's when it really kind of hit home. Yeah, talk about that. And now that it's kind of setting in a little bit more, you, you put your life at risk, and you've got a little girl in your Um. So... If I didn't put my life at risk, I probably I'm probably not here. Um, like I didn't I didn't know that he had extra magazines in his in his in his coat pockets. But when I seen the barrel down, I I mean you could shoot at the ground all day. That doesn't that's not gonna really hurt anybody. So um, that was my opportunity, and I went for it. So um, it paid off. <laughs> Um, it's uneasy, um, to say the least. Uh, but I don't feel like he's purposely after after me now. I, he might be mad that I that I got a control of his weapon and, and threw it, and you know I could I could see that. But I don't I don't think he'll purposely come after me. But then again, I didn't think Waffle House would be getting shot up at 3.30 in the morning uh, while I'm there, or ever, but um, it's uneasy, for sure. He kind of, he was kind of cussing um, when we was, when we was uh, wrestling around with the gun and 
when I finally got the gun from him and threw him and when we was outside, he was doing a bunch of cussing like I was in the wrong trying to save my life. But uh, um, that was it. It wasn't any kind of uh, any talk in between, really. It was just I knew I had to get that away from him as, as soon as possible. So. Um, so his face is, is, is like a blur. Like I said, when I hit him with the door, his head, it looked like his head, I think his head went down. And then after that, I think I'm taller than him. So I was just, like I said, I was wrestling with him, trying to get it. Um, what I saw in his face when we was walked in, it was just like, it was just like, he was just staring at us and he was like, I don't know if my friend saw, but I, I saw him, and I was like, "Why is he staring at us?" But I I don't know what that look is. It was just like a look of blank, a look of I'm, I'm not sure. Like this is lack of a better word, but meh. Like, and I guess that's just how he felt at that time. You made eye contact with him. Yes. Now that you know his history and this gun that was used and uh, taken away before, how does that make you feel? Uh, that's that's a that's a little uneasy too that he could you know just get it back from his his father. So simply, if his father did give it back, he could have just took it back. Um, but you know. Um, That's just that's that's kind of beyond me to think about right now. Cause <laughs> thinking about some other stuff, but yeah. What happened? What happened to your friend? How did that go? Oh, my friend's actually behind you all. Um, he was actually in the bathroom, um, and I was in the hallway, and uh, he's he's there. He's unscathed, and. Uh, we're all good. What are your injuries? Right um, so my knuckles busted up. I don't know if that came from glass or if that came from when we was fighting and punching. Um, my pinky is pretty split up. Um, when I grabbed the barrel of the, the weapon, um, it was hot from being discharged, I guess, so many times. But I really didn't care because it was life or death at that time. I didn't even feel it. Um, and then when I grabbed it, I just threw it over there. Then when I kind of, we tussled and moved outside, uh, I actually, when I was going around the corner, running back up the street, I actually fell and that's when I slipped and hit my knee. Um, and then I also have a, a graze from a bullet on my uh, upper elbow. Did you go to the hospital? I did. Okay. Did you get released this morning and went to church? Yes. I'm actually, if you would ask me, I'm actually not a greatly religious person. Um, I do believe in a divine entity. I just don't know if his name is God or Jesus or Buddha or Allah or whatever it is. But I know that in a tenth of a second, something was with me to run through that door and get the gun from him. Because you could probably do that ten times and you could only come out one time with the outcome I came out with. So, um, some somebody, something, some divine entity, something was looking over me. So, I just find it amazing that, you know, you saw four people murdered, you attacked this guy, and you went to church when you got out of the hospital. Well, I just wanted to persevere. Um... I don't want this to be like the focal point of my life. I know I'm going to be seen by a lot of people because all of the different media outlets and stuff, but I don't want this to be a major moment in my life, even though I know it's going to be. But I went to church to get 
past it, kind of, to try to start it off on the right foot. But it only happened 12 hours ago, if that, so. So I'm 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 not a hero. Um, I'm just a regular person, um, and I think, <laughs> and I think um, anybody could have did um, what I did if they're just pushed to pushed in that that kind of cage. And you have to either react or you have to, or you're gonna, you know, fold. And I chose to react because I didn't see any other way of me, you know, living. And that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to live. And I'll say it again. I didn't really, I didn't really fight that man to save everybody else. I know that might not be a popular thing, but I'm really honest. I'm going to be honest to the core. I took the gun so I could get myself out. And then I went back, and then I went back for my friend after I was like, "Let me see, is he, let me see, it still alive?" Because it was, it was just so fast. Like, I don't think, <laughs> I hope nobody ever has to be in those shoes again. But it was almost like light switch type fast. Like you hit a light switch and the lights on so fast, and you had to think. And so that was my my thought in that moment. Thank you, James. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. So I'm going to disagree with James just a little. The, uh, some people get labeled a hero because of the circumstances that they get caught up in. But a real definition of a hero is someone that knows the danger that they're facing and yet takes that action. And certainly James did. So thank you. Okay, I totally agree with what that officer was just saying. This guy is a hero. There's so many people out there that can't muster up the courage to do what James did. And I think it's really rare. And the thing is, is in, in these mass shooting situations, if somebody would just rush the shooter and multiple people, there would be way less casualties. And it's sad that we're in the situation where that matters, but it does. I, I remember the Virginia Tech shooting. Uh, do you remember that? Like he just walked around and executed like 20-something people with a pistol. Now, at during that time, when all those people were lined up against the wall, they could have turned and attacked. And yes, some would probably die, but nowhere near the numbers. Okay, so as a whole, we need to try to figure out a way to muster up the courage to go attack the shooter. Okay, now, even some of the Medal of Honor winners don't sound as humble as this guy, all right? So he really is, like he said at the very beginning, the kind of guy that you'd want to be friends with, a cool guy, all right? So I hope everyone watched this and feels the same sense of emotion that I did when I watched it, even the second time. Uh, you know, it makes me feel emotional. All right, so I guess until next time, everybody be safe out there.